So the Chesapeake Bay is the nation's biggest estuary, where all the species of plants and animals that live here just thrive because of that mixing zone between salt and fresh. I live in the Chop Tank watershed and it's a great place to live and to raise a family. When you talk up to people and what our activities revolve around, it's often water. Watermen harvesting oysters and Maryland's famous blue crabs have defined the culture of the Chesapeake Bay's eastern shore for generations. But agriculture and tourism are now big industries here too, which means more development and that's changed the way water moves from land into the bay. Historically, it would rain and that water would filter into the ground and then slowly seep into our rivers and streams. But to facilitate development and conversion to cropland, we've had to drain a lot of lands through ditches that more quickly transmit that water into our local waterways. We have an over-enrichment of nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment that are essentially making the waters inhospitable to aquatic life. Oysters have been hit the hardest. Only about 1% of historical reefs remain due to poor water quality, compounded with over-harvesting, disease, and habitat loss. And with oyster populations low, which feed by filtering water, the bay's natural cleaning system is crippled. Other animals are affected too, like juvenile striped bass and blue crabs, which depend on the reef's nooks and crannies to hide in. So now the trick is how do we slow and filter polluted runoff through wetlands or plants? So we work with citizens, community leaders, businesses on these different ways to try and better utilize the water before it leaves the land and pollutes our nearby waterways. To magnify local efforts like these, NOAA established the Chop Tank River Habitat Focus Area in 2014, bringing with it federal resources focused on three main areas, restoration, science, and community engagement. One of those restoration objectives is to try to restore oyster populations in 10 tributaries throughout Chesapeake Bay by the year 2025. And so NOAA is focusing our effort in the Chop Tank because we have three tributaries there where we've developed blueprints for how to achieve that oyster restoration. So far, positive results are coming in from the first restoration effort in Harris Creek. At the start, NOAA used sonar to survey for suitable sites. Once determined, partners deposited oyster shell and rock to create hard bottom substrate where needed. Then, billions of young hatchery-raised oysters were planted on the new reefs. The effort restored over 350 acres, and today's surveys are finding lots of living oysters, with most sites exceeding expectations. Scientists are also tracking how fish and crabs use restored reefs, and how much nitrogen oysters remove from the water. But the long-term success hinges on addressing the runoff issue, a main objective of the Habitat Focus Area science effort. Today we are performing seasonal sampling for water quality that is part of our ecological assessment. We have eight different locations in the Tread Ava, and each of those locations is characterized by a particular land use type, from agriculture, forested, mixed use, or urban. The scientific information that we're then developing will be relayed and conveyed back to those local managers who can be then better informed as they make decisions that govern how the landscape changes. On the community engagement front, groups like the Midshore Riverkeeper Conservancy also receive these data and engage with others through a partnership called Envision the Chop Tank. This network of local organizations, agencies, and individuals work with landowners on many fronts, like reducing fertilizer use to clean up runoff, moving away from riprap and constructed riverbanks to living shorelines, and growing oysters on private property. So I think a restored chop tank will look like a river that is now fishable and swimmable for all the people that live in that community. And that translates to habitats, those oyster reefs, and making sure that over the long haul they're able to grow and recover in a way that future development and activities don't harm them. These projects that are slowing and filtering runoff are working. You know, we've been excited to see just over the last couple of years major improvements in water clarity and people are encouraged that we may be able to, within a generation's time, bring back this resource the way they remember it as kids. So there's hope, and that's a great thing. <laughs>